You're watching KCMI TV. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, let's get into the Word of the Lord today. And uh, this week I had a verse just really come up in my spirit that I want to talk to you about. And so we're going to take our text out of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. And uh, I just really want to, I'm going to read the whole verse, but I want to just extract just a portion of it. It says, preach the word. This is Paul talking to Timothy. He said, preach the word. Be instant <clears throat> in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And so what I want to talk to you is just the part where he said, be instant in season and out of season. Um, we all enjoy the, the times in our life where we feel like that we're just really connected with God and uh, things are going well and the Spirit of God's moving or we're flourishing in our calling. But <clears throat> what do you do with the seasons to where it seems like God is at a distance? where your prayer, you know, there's a lot of times uh, when we go to prayer, there's a lot of feeling involved. You can feel God. You can, man, your hair might stand up on your on your arms or you get goosebumps and you can just, just feel the unction of the Lord. But then there's those seasons where you're not praying by feeling, <clears throat> you're praying by faith. And so when Paul begins to write here, he told Timothy, he said, son, he said, you need to be instant, which just simply means be prepared and be ready. He said, in season and out of season. And uh, the word season here, when he's speaking, he said, it literally means opportunity. So he said, Timothy, he said, you need to be ready in times when there is opportunity but he said you also need to be prepared when there isn't any opportunity and that's really what i want to talk to you about today is the seasons to where it seems like there's no opportunity at all in our life whether god is moving our lives financially or in our health um and you know i i believe that there's just even right now i just release to you healing in your body i just speak the healing power of God. I'm sick and tired of the enemy coming against the people of God with infirmity, and I bind that thing in Jesus' name. And even right now while I'm talking to you, you lay hands on yourself, and I loose divine healing on you in the name of the Lord. Um, I, I feel like I am qualified to talk about this because I have experienced uh, when God shows up and there was no opportunity. And I think that God has done more for through men when there seemed to be no opportunity for God to move than when it looked like all the stars had lined up and everything was in order. And it just, you know, it seemed like God was present. And I think the reason being is a lot of times when everything is going well and God does something, uh, we have a tendency to take part of the credit. And yet you and I know that there are seasons in our life where it literally looked like there was no opportunity for an answer, no way that God could move. And out of the blue, the suddenly, God just did it. And it's in those moments he does it that way because he gets all the glory. There's nothing there for us to take credit for. And this is why uh, Paul is writing to Timothy. He said, don't let the seasons where it seems like God is a million miles away and every door is shut. There is no opportunity. There's no opening for God to do what you want him to do. He said, in those seasons... Don't let your guard down. You keep on praying. You keep on declaring the word of the Lord. You keep on professing the word of God. And uh, this is uh, not letting the word depart from your mouth. 
there is, uh, in the Old Testament, there's a story of one of David's three mighty men, and it talks about him. I think it was Eliezer, but it says that um, he had a battle with Philistines, and he killed hundreds of them with a sword. And at the end of the battle, when he had won, when they came to, to get him and uh, to give him rest and try to take the sword out of his hand, it said that his hand cleaved to the sword. They couldn't get the sword out of his hand because in that battle he had cleaved to the sword. Well, we know that in the New Testament, Ephesians says that the sword is the word of God. And when you're in battle, what the enemy wants to do is get you to release your hand off of the word of the Lord, because the sword is our only offensive weapon. Everything else in Ephesians is defensive. The helmet, the the shield, uh, the feet being shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. But the sword is your offensive weapon. And that's where, when there is no opportunity, there is no place for God to move, it looks like in the natural, that you continue to be ready and you believe that God is still going to do something. God is the God of the suddenlies. And I want to just go through the scriptures here and give you some example. I I love Psalm 75 because it talks about uh, that promotion doesn't come from the the east the west or the south and the next verse it says god sets up men and he puts down men promotion comes from the lord and when men promote you it's temporary when god promotes you it's permanent nobody can remove you from the position that god puts you in and so I'm, I'm thinking i was just reflecting on this yesterday as i was studying for this podcast The men that God showed up in their life when it looked like there was no opportunity, and uh, but they were prepared, they were ready, and of course I think uh, one of the greats is King David, and you know when when Saul uh, God removed him from his kingdom and he said uh, I found a man after my own heart. We know the story that Samuel went to to the house and. Uh, Jesse's house, and you know, he went through all those brothers, and God said, none of them, and and Samuel said, is there another? You know where David was? He he wasn't with his brethren. He wasn't in the house. He wasn't eating supper with them. Uh, he wasn't relaxed. They had, David was in the back of the pasture somewhere, and he was tending sheep, and We know this from the scriptures that David was a psalmist and he he wrote songs, he praised God, and he had learned that when I'm in a place where it looks like there's no opportunity for advancement, all I am is a shepherd. I'm just a servant. I'm the least in my father's house. Boy, that's mentioned several times in the Bible. And out of the blue, Somebody shows up and says, you're needed in your father's house. And when he walks in, the prophet hits him with the anointing and makes him king of Israel. That fast, he went from being alone and isolated, just taking care of sheep. But see, his heart was in the right place. He was prepared. God looked at him and said, I can use this man. And because he would listen to David when there was no reason to, when he would play his harp out there by himself in solitude and sing to the Lord, and it moved God. And God said, that's the one I want. And just within an hour's time, he went from invisible, unknown, to having the anointing of God on his life and becomes king of Israel. That's how, see, this is the suddenly of God. I think that it's in the seasons where we say we're out of season. You know, uh, those times where every door is shut and you just say, God, where are you? Are you within a million miles of me? And God says, oh, he said, stay ready. You know, I was thinking of, um, of Moses and, you know, he knew he had to call a God in his life and, and at the age of 40, he, 
He's extracted from his home. He's running for his life from Pharaoh, winds up uh, in the desert of Midian and <clears throat> meets Jethro, his future father-in-law. And Jethro takes him and makes him a shepherd, <clears throat> tending sheep. And for 40 years, Moses lived in a dimension where he was out of season. There, there looked like there was no opportunity. And I want to say this. There are so many of you that are listening to me today that um, you might feel like you've aged out or uh, you have no connections. Listen, I've been there. Uh, we, we have seen the suddenlies. I, I have seen suddenlies in my life. I'm telling you, God changed my ministry in a 24-hour period. Um, it just through one event that I, I did not see it coming. I was just keep doing what God called me to do. And, and Moses is in the backside of the desert. And sometimes, and I want you to get this in your spirit, sometimes um, the delay has nothing to do with you. You say, well, maybe I'm not close enough to God. I'm not, you know, I'm not praying enough or, you know, I, whatever. And you, you, the enemy will try to get you to disqualify yourself. It don't have anything to do with you. It has to do with the purpose that God is going to use you in has not yet come to fruition in the natural realm. And see, God left Moses. God always knew he was going to use Moses. That's why he spared him when he was born in the river and Pharaoh's daughter finds him. The hand of God was always on Moses, but Moses thinks for 40 years, this is all I am as a shepherd. And yet when prophecy was fulfilled that had been given to Abraham that 430 years would the seed be in Egypt and then there would be a deliverer. Moses doesn't know he's the deliverer. He thinks he's done. He thinks he's out of season. There's no opportunity. And in a moment's time, what's he doing? He's just staying prepared. He's, he's just doing what God called him to do at that point. He's taking care of sheep. And he turns around, and there's God in a bush, a burning bush. And God begins to speak to Moses at that moment. And at the age of 80, after 40 years, out of season, just like that, God thrusts Moses to become the most famous man in Egypt and become the Old Testament pastor, lead two to three million people out of bondage. And to me, probably one of the greatest men of the Old Testament so powerful that on the Mount of Transfiguration, God put Moses there to talk with Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> give you a, a, another example, and then <clears throat> we'll, we'll wind it up. But one of my all-time favorite characters in the Old Testament, he's one of two, really, that there's no, ever, there's no mention ever of any failure in his life. Uh, one is Daniel, who we can't ever find where he had any failure. The other one is uh, Joseph. And when you go back and you say the scriptures, Joseph and Jesus have so many similarities from being betrayed by their brothers and, and just the list goes on and on. Uh, and Joseph knows that he's called because he's had a vision from the Lord. He's had a dream from God that one day certain events would take place, but uh, at the age of 17, all of that comes to an end. He's thrown into to prison. Eventually, he is betrayed by his brethren. He's accused of rape, uh, yet he's, he maintains his integrity with God. Don't let the seasons where you feel like I'm out of season, and I don't know, and does God even know where I'm at? You got to be really careful that you don't let um, bitterness get in you and you don't allow the enemy to accuse, use your mouth to accuse God. This is what Paul is saying, son, stay ready out of season. You know, it's easy to be ready in season. You got to stay ready out of season. And here's Joseph. And for 13 years, 
he literally goes from one hellish situation to another and <laughs> he's finally in prison and he's even forgotten by uh, the butler whom he had helped a lot and this will show you what ha how God can do something and this is what's going to happen to a lot of God's people. I believe that we are on the edge of a suddenly where God is just going to grab you and thrust you into a dimension that that will be amazing. And he go he's in prison and you see God needed him there because he needed a butler to know the gift that Joseph had. Because there would be a day when a king would have a dream and he would need an interpretation that nobody had but Joseph. And the moment the king has the dream, the butler remembers, and he went in an out-of-season time now. Remember that he's out-of-season. There's no opportunity. He is in prison. He thinks he's there forever. And in a 24-hour period, when God says it's time, he extracts him from prison, cleans him up, puts a fresh clothes, fresh clothes on him, a chain around his neck, and he becomes second in command in the land of Egypt. With Paul, he said, suddenly a light shone around me. He's going one direction and God turns him around. I, I want to read this to you as we end. I, I know I said I'd end with uh, Joseph, but I, I, I feel I want to end with this one because I was reading this the other day and it's just, it's just so amazing to me. Um, this is in the book of Esther, and it's dealing with uh, Mordecai, and um, we know this, that Haman hates Mordecai, and we're in a setting where everything is out of season. There has already been um, a declaration in the land that all the Jews are going to be killed. Mordecai is a Jew. Esther's a Jew. They seem to have no answer. It looks like it's over. And it happens because of the hatred that Haman has for Mordecai. And it says in verse uh, 4 of chapter 6, and the king said, who's in the court? It says, now Haman came into the outer court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. So Haman's coming into the house and he's going to ask the king to hang Mordecai. And verse 6, Haman came in and the king said to him, What shall be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor? And Haman thought in his heart, Well, that's me. Nobody would king delight to honor more than me. And uh, he tells him what needs to be done. And the king says to Haman, make haste. See how fast it happens? You go from the man that's going to have the king hanging. He says, make haste, take the peril of the horse, and as thou hast said, do thou even so to Mordecai the Jew. And Haman had to take the apparel of the horse and array Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaimed, this shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor Mordecai came to the king's gate, but Haman went to his house mourning, having his head covered. See how fast that happens? It doesn't matter what the enemy is doing in your life. He's getting ready to hang you and take you out. I want to tell you, the king delights in you, and there is honor coming. There is promotion in the atmosphere for those who not only were ready when everything was in order and it looked like God was moving, but in the season to where you feel like, God, I'm lost. You don't know where I'm at. And God says, no, you've been instant. You've been ready. Now watch me when there's no opportunity, it looks like. That's when God brings promotion. So I, I hope this has encouraged you today. Um, I purposely didn't go through some of the things I've seen God do in my life, but I can promise you this, he is the God of the suddenlies. And if you are a child of God and there's a hand of God on you, God is not going to forsake you. He is going to be a God of the suddenly 
in your life. So you hang in there, you be strong, and I'll see you next week. God bless you. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org. And for the latest updates or videos, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Candy Christmas of Regeneration Nashville, and I want to talk with you about Elijah Co. I am never more excited about any conference that we host than I am Elijah Co. It's coming up September the 5th through the 7th. It's being held at Sheridan Music City, and you don't want to miss it. Dr. Tim Sheets will be with us. He has a powerful ministry. He's a powerful man of God. You don't want to miss him. Also, Pastor John Kilpatrick, who pastored the Brownsville revival. I know you've heard so much about that. I'm so excited to receive an impartation from these wonderful men of God. And of course, Pastor Kent Christmas will be speaking, Pastor Harry Saylor, myself, and amazing music by Pastor Jasmine Christmas Brady, the Isaacs, and Higher Ground. So we've got wonderful speakers, wonderful musicians. But I also want to tell you that we have rooms blocked and guaranteed for our registrants. If you go online and register for Elijah Co. before August the 16th, you're guaranteed to have a room at the Music City Sheridan and at our special rate. On August the 16th, we have to release those rooms. We can't guarantee that you'll be able to stay on the grounds. The last few years, those rooms booked up fast. So go online and register and let them know that you're part of the Elijah Co. and you'll get that special rate and you'll be guaranteed to stay right there on the grounds with us. This is the most wonderful conference that we host all year round. Very intimate, very loving. We'll work worship together, we'll eat cake together, and we'll worship the Lord and sit under this wonderful ministry. I love you so much, and I can't wait to see you at Elijah Co.